A very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this 118th episode of the Together for Education webinar series brought to you by Notebook. Back in April 2020, when this pandemic had just set in and schools were quickly coming to terms with the new normal of online education, we at Notebook felt that it was our duty to create a platform where experienced educators could come and share their thoughts, their ideas, their problems, and seek solutions from this wonderful community. Well, little did we know that over a year and 118 episodes later, I would still be welcoming you for this wonderful journey that Together for Education has had. I have to thank each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart. We've discussed a myriad range of topics. We started off talking about online education, digital learning. We went on to more broad subjects like holistic learning. We discussed the NEP, the curriculum, lesson planning, and even topics like mental health. Today, we look at a topic that is perhaps a little outside the boundaries of the school, but nevertheless, contribute massively to our learning, the holidays, and how schools have been successfully utilizing the holiday periods to ensure that learning assumes newer dimensions. Our first speaker today, speaking on this topic, is Mr. Philip Barry. Mr. Barrett retired as the deputy headmaster from the illustrious Dune School in Dehradun after 44 years of serving in education across various institutions. Mr. Barrett served the Dune School as housemaster, head of department, dean of activities, dean of student welfare, deputy headmaster, second master, and acting headmaster with great distinction. He also carried out a visioning exercise for the Dune School in the year 2011 through an in-depth study of a number of British public schools and various schools in the US. Mr. Barrett qualified as a leadership trainer at Wellington College UK in the year 2000. He is also an athlete, an adventurer, and a naturalist. And we at Notebook are privileged to have him as our senior advisor. So thank you so much for making the time to be here. Over to you. Thank you very much, Shubayu. I hope I'm audible and partly visible. <laughs> yes, sir, perfectly. Yeah, um, I, uh, have to, uh, uh, I have to tell you that I sort of misread this topic so I'm going to gloss over and probably digress into a little more homework. Um, anyway, uh, when you look at holidays, uh, when I look at holidays and how you know we get about three to four months of holidays um, every every year. Now these these holidays can be spent, uh, you know, can be utilized uh, in a wasteful way, watching television and overeating and and you know visiting malls. And you can also really put yourself forward. I mean, I've seen students who really use the holidays to, to best effect. And uh, some, of the, some of the things that I would advise uh, my students to do was to work on their projects. Uh, this is the time to you know, do a lot of research and, and do those projects which are uh, mandatory uh, in most of the boards, even the international exams. And uh, this is the time to, do, to, to spend some time on the research. The other thing is that I would advise is to, this is a time to read, watch good movies and videos. And, you know, not only the fun stuff, but some of the educational stuff. There are, there's so much material out there that uh, we don't have the time to watch during the, during term time. So this is a time for videos, the movies and books. Um, I would also advise a lot of people to develop a hobby if they haven't uh, already done that. Uh, I would also advise one aesthetic hobby could be, you know, public speaking, a language or, a, or photography or art. And the other is a more physical hobby, a sport. This is the time to really put your sport forward. Join a club, learn tennis. Um, the other thing for senior children would be to get some job experience. Get, get, your, get your hands dirty with, you know, some summer job. Um, you know, it, it doesn't matter what it is because serving tables, but get used to the workforce. Um, and, and get paid for it. Uh, it's very important to learn how to get paid for what you do and, and save that money. Uh, travel is another thing that I would advise children to do with their parents, with their friends, if they're senior, go for, go for a trek. It doesn't have to be rail and air travel, but a lot is learned through travel. Writing journals, I think it's important to, to, for, for kids to write uh, while they read and write, and write a journal, write short stories. Um, uh, community and social service, especially in milieus outside their normal, um, you know, um, setting. Uh, that is, they should live in a rural area, maybe three to four days. 
and try and fluff up their CVs uh, with some good solid community service, which can be sustained over a period of three to four years. This does a lot for their CV uh, when they have to later apply to colleges. Um, many children join summer camps. Um, I work for Inni, which is one of the best uh, uh, outdoor adventure um, platforms. Uh, children, you know, they can raft, there's rafting, there's trekking, there's mountain biking, there's a lot of rock climbing. And uh, they meet people of different backgrounds from different schools, different parts of India. And there is a lot to learn in these summer camps. Um, but one thing I, I want to now move to is that a lot of schools give homework. Now, the jury is still out on whether homework is something is good or bad. You know, countries like Finland have banned homework. But I still find that a lot of homework is piled up upon children, which has to be done during the holidays. Uh, a, 19, a 2013 Harvard research um, said that uh, homework doesn't put anyone forward. It causes stress, physical health problems, uh, it, uh, lack of balance in their lives, and it also alienates them from people. Um, some educationists call for a total ban of homework as it leads to burnout, depression, and cuts out that wonderful playtime that children learn so much from. Um, I know that a lot of schools do give homework and it is good to have homework because it substantiates and consolidates a lot of what you learned in class. And especially if you're not doing well in a subject, the holidays are a period, um, a period of time where you can go through your books, maybe make up for weak areas, maybe even seek some extra help so uh, if, if the holidays are used to uh, review and uh, you know, recall some of the work that you did, well, it's a good idea. But uh, too much and too lengthy spoils holidays and the children will draw away from those subjects. Um, sometimes teachers put a lot of work and load on studies especially when they know that they cannot finish the syllabus. And so instead of teaching it, uh, they dump it on the children, uh, which really means bad planning, a poor awareness of the syllabus cover, and children have to now learn this um, and, and consider it done as a part of the syllabus. This is not the good way of doing it. Um, whenever any homework cuts into a planned holiday, a family holiday, it ruins it it becomes tedious. Also, a lot of homework is repetitive and boring and students would resort to outside help. They would copy their work and there's no need and there's no point in just plagiarizing, you know, cut paste from, from, from books and online websites. There's no point in that. If homework is given, it's got to be meaningful and it's got to be loved by the children. Now, research has shown that doing repetitive work like a hundred problems in a certain sum, it doesn't really help as long as the concept is not clear. But if your concept is clear, if I know how to do division, I just need to do three sums to consolidate that concept. But a lot of homework in the holidays is repetitive. Uh, homework encourages a sedentary lifestyle, which you don't want during holidays. You want them to get out. Uh, homework isn't very healthy in every home. There are some homes where it's difficult. They are cramped spaces. Uh, you know, there's there's no space. Uh, there's park cuts. There's you know, and so it's homework in every family is different. Some parents do not provide the kind of support that homework needs. There are personal barriers, and um, and so one has to consider the type of teach the type of children you give homework to. Also, you know, um, you know for, for homework is a full-time job in the sense that you've just come off a term, you want to relax, and then you've got piles of homework that you have to do. And uh, then parents sit on your head and it just leads to dislike of the subject. And it's proved that a lot of holiday homework isn't even corrected, which is really uh, a sad uh, commentary on some teachers. Um, surveys have found that homeworks creates a negative attitude to the school, towards the school, and uh, the effect of homework, the positive effect of homework has not really been backed up enough. Um, 
the, there are there are good things about homework as well. For example, it really is a time to put yourself forward in a subject if you need extra help and if you've not been doing well in class. I think it's important to keep in touch with that subject. Um, it also encourages parents to make that connection with their children and maybe help them, um, uh, you know, um, doing that homework. And in doing so, you have a parent student connect, parent child connect. Uh, it, it, it opens a bridge of communication often between a parent and a child. Um, also, uh, you know, I think homework um, done during the holidays, um, if it's done, uh, you know, at a certain time, uh, half an hour a day, um, and made to be fun, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, I think it could benefit a student. Also, it's important to see how much homework is given in the holidays. Something that takes about half an hour for a child's day, um, you know, not for the whole not for the whole holiday, but for some, would be would be good. Um, especially these days where you have project based learning and the flipped classroom, this is the time to do your background reading. This is the time to um, to to do your projects and research and be ready uh, for school. I think it's also important for them to get project work and homework that involves teamwork, that involves other students, um, keeps them in touch, especially these lockdown times. Um, we have you know, uh, all these online um, uh, uh, you know, platforms where children can get together and work as a team and do a combined project. Um, uh, children love homework that involves um, practical work, building dams or making a model of water harvesting, you know, growing uh, plants in boxes or seeing caterpillars turn into butterflies and, you know, and not butterflies so much as the cocoon, um, making things out of waste, um, coloring and cutting and pasting. This is what children love to do. Interviews, you know, interviewing people and coming out with some statistics, something practical. Um, Sometimes uh, uh, your know, homework uh, in the holidays should involve observation and experiments. Like, you know, children love to note the maximum and minimum temperatures of the day or how much rainfall and plot this in graphs or look at sunset and sunrise times, look at pressure. Um, uh, also heart rate, you know, check your heart rate and then do a minimum uh, exercise and check your heart rates and, and draw graphs on how fast this heart rate falls. Um, after two minutes, you know, practical things. Um, I think also a very important type of homework is, uh, I know at some schools give homework in Australia, like do a good act, write down a good act. Uh, how many people could you help in the holidays? Did you visit the blind school? Did you go and do some social um, and, and, and charitable work? Um, what good acts did you do? How did you help your grandparents or old people? Did you go to a hospital? So a lot of Holiday tasks can be, you know, this sort of work. Um, um, I would also advise, um, um, as I said before, keeping a log. Um, um, I'd, I'd also want children to play much more, uh, especially, I, I know in the lockdown time, it's not been possible, but I think kids need to, to get out and play. Um, in, in middle school, especially in middle school, uh, as I said earlier, reading and group assignments are, are very important. But as you get to more senior classes, I think research work also, as I said, um, uh, social community service, uh, fluffing up your CV, these are, these are very important um, uh, things to do in the holidays. Um, I think another thing that one could do in the holidays is these MOOCs that I read about, these massive online um, tests that last a couple of months, um, they, they're, they're free. And a lot of our students are doing these MOOCs and, and learning from top professors and universities abroad, and then putting this on their CV. Um, so I think uh, this is something else that students can, can do online um, in the holidays. Um, but apart from that, I think minimum homework, a lot of stuff that uh, will put you forward is travel meeting people, 
um, doing summer jobs, earning your own money, uh, meeting people of different backgrounds, going for summer camps, and um, also keeping in touch with your books so that when you get back to school, you're not uh, blank. And uh, with that, uh, Shavayu, I'm going to hand this over to you. I hope I have covered some of the things that kids could do in the holidays. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for that wonderful comprehensive list of ways to spend a holiday. Uh, the, the wasteful things that you asked us not to do has been mostly how I have spent my holidays. I wish now that I could go back and spend them better. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker today is Ochan Bhattacharya. Ochan is the founder and CEO at Notebook. A chartered accountant by training, Ochan was a director at Deloitte prior to starting Notebook. He has worked in India and abroad in various senior capacities in GE, PwC, KPMG and Deloitte. Ochan is a fellow of the ICAI and a member of CPA Australia and CPA Ireland. He is also the recipient of the prestigious Indian Achievers Award. Ochan is an avid reader and a passionate traveler with keen interests in economics, history, literature, and philosophy. He is a regular speaker at various forums and chambers of commerce, and also contributes articles to numerous publications regularly. He is also on the board of some of the most renowned corporates and contributes significantly to their brand strategies. Ochan, over to you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Shivaya Mordigal? Yeah, Ochan, loud and clear. I want to welcome all of you to today's session. I always believe that vacations are good for us. And I've even heard anecdotally that they can reduce the stress and even prevent a cardiac arrest. But I always wondered about the science behind these statements. Now, while educators debate the merits of year-round schooling, administrators across the globe continue to tinker with the school calendar. Now, of course, now things are different over the last uh, one and a half years. But we are discussing about a pre-pandemic era. Of course, I'll come to the pandemic portion also later. I was reading about the school uh, known as I Promise School, IPS. Now, this is a public elementary school in Ohio, opened in 2018. Uh, this is supported by a foundation, uh, LeBron James Family Foundation, and specifically aimed at at-risk children. What I really found interesting about the school is that the school values things that no money could buy. It believes that it doesn't take money to build relationships. It doesn't take money for you to teach students how to love. Now, the family resource center and the school's family plan are aimed at the students' families to ensure a stable learning experience at home. Deviating from traditional timetables, school days last from eight to five, and summer vacation is shortened significantly. And shorter breaks are scattered throughout the year instead. So if you look at the school calendar, they have continuous periodic breaks. But most of the debates over the contours of the school year are premised on the historical myth that summer break stems from a time when children needed to work on the farm. A myth that biases this debate and ignores the challenges that prompted the introduction of summer vacation that still exists today. Now, if, if, you, if you go back and look at history, in the early 1800s, agrarian communities generally operated public schools for a winter and summer term of two to three months each, the spring and fall. Now, labor-intensive times uh, for farming featured no school. Now, during the summer, no less important than agricultural season, older children were typically absent from school since families counted on their labor. At the same time, urban school systems were developing with different needs driving the calendar. But as in rural areas, the need for labor and the absence of compulsory education laws, now we are discussing about historic times, kept vast number of school age children from attending classes all year. Now for both rural and urban districts, 
these patterns changed by the end of 19th century. In many cases, officials never formally set out to, to rethink the school calendar. Rather, you know, it is more of a year to year exigency, ranging from uh, fiscal limitation to popular pressure to have holidays off, led to school year reductions that once undertaken were difficult to undo. While reformers worked hard to increase overall student attendance, school officials grew wary of opening schools on days when a large number of students were not present, driving the length of school year down. Now, uh, a push for standardizing school calendar also contributed to a shift towards summer off. The summer was the obvious place for most of these cuts. Because if you look at, for instance, if you look at uh, wealthy urban inhabitants, they traditionally vacated the cities during the hot summer months, a practice that expanded to the middle class in the 19th century. And, and many school buildings with poor ventilation were especially unbearable during the summer. And attendance did tail off towards the end of the quarter. Now, there were also you know, handy ideological reasons for prolonging the summer vacation. Uh, foremost were uh, medical and popular beliefs about the frailty of the human mind and body that translated into real fears of overexertion by students and educators. Now, summer vacation was heralded as an opportunity for mental and physical rejuvenation. And school officials really hastened to reassure taxpayers and parents that teachers would benefit professionally from adding from additional training during the summer. In rural areas, reformers uh, wanted lengthier but also standardized school calendar. Uh, for instance, uh, in some, some pockets of the world, if you see, uh, there have been, uh, for instance, they aim to make the school year longer. For instance, uh, for example, the five month average found in Michigan in, in uh, 1840s. But they do agree that a longer school year did not require a summer term. They viewed the summer term as inferior to the winter one because it attracted younger students and was commonly taught by young women as opposed to older men whose quality also ranged widely. So using legal, financial, and bureaucratic mechanism, they prodded districts to add school days and to reconfigure the school year. It is easy to, to misconceive summer vacation as a single product of agrarian needs rather than this more you know, complicated story of demands for uh, standardization, teacher professionalization, budget problem, lax attendance, and fears of overburdening students. And this historical inaccuracy matters because the, the, the misrepresentation leaves today's reformers fighting the wrong battle. Now, uh, so this was a little bit on the, on the historical perspective uh, with regard to, with regard to, so because you see, uh, today if you look at wealthier parents, for instance, they regularly exercise options such as enrichment programs, summer camp, travel abroad for their children, ultimately making summer learnings loss highly correlated to, to socioeconomic status. But since summer schools cost money, it requires an investment in public sector. Because if, if you really want that at all years of the pyramid, children can benefit. So naturally, uh, that, that's a separate thing altogether. Uh, now, 120 years of summer vacation have encouraged the rich and the poor. And to participate in activities centered on summer vacation and uh, to really utilize it. But if you look at vacations, they have also transformed drastically over the years. From a time of unstructured play and fun, vacations now are also a time to learn and sharpen new skills. You know, but are also referring to that, that on some experience and then again, a huge load, workload, etc. on students. So that was a pre-pandemic world, but today things are completely different. Today, uh, we are discussing about breaks. Today, uh, there has been a reset button which has been pressed. And for last one and a half years, we all know that schools are shut and children are studying from home. But even in this post-pandemic world, uh, which has been very long and hard, I believe that the global pandemic has, has definitely taken its toll on families and children as well. Children have not been able to engage in their normal routine. So be it sitting in a classroom with, with friends, teachers, visit extended family, 
or participate in social activities without a mask. So it's not that if children are not coming to school, they are socialized. They are locked up in their homes. Now, parents are more concerned about their children's emotional well-being than they were before the pandemic. I was going through a research uh, survey uh, done by uh, Pew Research Center, and because that says that the situation may have grown more dire as children have spent uh, much of the school year online. Now, children need to do self-initiated activities. That are rewarding for for them for their own sake. This will create, you know, a happier tomorrow, happier children, as research has shown, uh, leading to improvement in physical, cognitive, social, emotional, and creative outcomes later in life. So, for instance, uh, when we look at activities like childhood play, which helps in developing foundational motor skills, lead to active lifestyle, prevents obesity. Activities like rock climbing, which gives children a chance to build confidence, that will serve them well later in life. Even say rough and tumble play teaches children verbal skills as they have to negotiate when things threaten to get out of hand. Taking risks on the or, or taking risks on the playground owns executive functioning skills such as concentrating, problem solving, and regulating one's emotions. Races gives children of different backgrounds an opportunity to become friends. So play, I believe, is a part of our uh, a part of our evolutionary heritage, and gives us opportunities to practice and hone the skills needed to live in a complex world. And and today, since children are locked up, and and and, and much of the we are lost, although schools are closed, but schooling is going on. So what happens when children do not get a chance to play? They don't have a safe way to release toxic stress, and they lash out with antisocial behavior. If you focus more on only academic achievements rather than play, it is very likely that young people will develop uh, anxiety, depression, and a lack of creativity, which to me is, is is very very serious. Play may be an effective antidote to things like with uh, impulsivity, aggression, uncontrolled emotion that results from significant childhood adversity and and uh, the kind of toxic stress that comes in. Even more than usual, it would seem. Children in the pandemic era need a chance to play before they resume their formal education. So, for instance, if you look at what's happening around the world, in in UK, for instance, experts in childhood development have called for, and so this is a few months back, they had called for a summer of filled with play to recover from the pandemic. So, I was reading about uh, I was reading about writings of uh, a professor of child psychology at uh, the University of Reading, Helen Dodd, and and. His opinion was that children need time to reconnect and play with their friends post pandemic. They need to be reminded how good it feels to be outdoors after so long inside, and they need to get physically active again. So, when we are looking at when we are looking at uh, setting the clock back, when we are looking at things again getting back to normal, so researchers around the world are placing so much of emphasis on play. Say, for instance, one classic way to play is activity like, say, for example, going. Is camping in a good camp experience? Children get to so they swim, climb trees, learn skills such as sailing, archery, play basketball, make friends, take a break from screen, relax from the pressure, and be present in the moment. So I would really love for more children to get those kind of opportunities. Now, uh, for instance, what could be more uh, uh, what could be more fun or intense rather than playing capture the flag in the woods? An activity like that. For those who do not or cannot get away to stay away outdoor camp, scholars and policymakers around the world have been exploring ways to create urban play landscapes. So I'll give you one example. Uh, one example is the ultimate block party that brought fifty thousand people into Central Park in New York City to partake in make-believe construction and adventure games. And this was done very recently. Children in emotionally disadvantaged uh, Communities also deserve to take a break from school, explore the world, take risks in a relatively safer environment, move their bodies, meet new people, learn things that cannot be measured easily, the standardized test. So, if we think of all the rewarding things that children could do, uh, naturally, importance of things like day camps, with, with arts and crafts, sports theater, activities like beat, say podcasting, three-dimensional painting, visiting family in other parts of of the, of the country. Swimming at the pool, riding bikes, are so so important. Not say be simple things like performing in a band, as many scholars have advocated. 
So uh, I think it is important for all stakeholders to come together and give children a chance to do activities that are voluntary, joyful, and imaginative. And when I when I say these words, first thing that comes to our mind naturally is play. So we will all agree that modern lifestyle is a disproportionate mixture of hectic work life and stressful personal life. We are barely left with time for ourselves, but thanks to the 10 to 12 hours that are spent at office desk. So and 10 to 12 hours also is no exaggeration. We all know at times it's such as far beyond that. So I think that's the reason why vacations are so important. It releases us from our daily schedule. Apart from relaxation of body and mind, also I think uh, it really helps in terms of improving our daily life. So, because in sense giving us the space to, to spend time with ourselves. So these are two things that I wanted to share. I thank all of you for giving me a patient hearing. We have a really wonderful panel here today and I really look forward to, them, to hear from them, their perspective on this topic. Over to you, Shubhai. Thank you, Rachin. Thank you for all that wonderful presentation and those stories from around the globe. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as Rachin mentioned, we do have a fantastic panel lined up for you today. But before we start with the discussion, I'll just take a couple of minutes to tell you about Notebook. We at Notebook are an edtech product. We make short videos pertaining to the school curriculum, which means that every topic of every subject from the syllabus is available as short videos. Now, these videos come in handy in two cases. One, when you as a teacher are taking a class, you have access to these videos during your class. So you can play a six minute video as a visual introduction to a topic like French Revolution or parts of the human body before you start teaching. The second use is when the students are at home and need to revise their chapters. They have access to the same videos on their personal devices, laptops, smartphones, or whatever they have. So they can then watch these videos over and over again, whenever they want and wherever they want. And in the process, have a better understanding and remember more easily what you taught in class. What I'm going to do now is play you a short clip of one of the notebook videos so that you know exactly what I'm talking about. What are you doing, my boy? I am going to sleep. Do you want to hear a story? Um, not a bad idea. Lisa and Lucy are very good friends of each other. Every month, Lisa saved 100 rupees in a piggy bank. Whereas, Lucy saved 100 rupees in a bank. At the end of one year, Lisa had 1200 rupees with her. But Lucy had 1240 rupees. But why did Lucy have more money? <laughs> Due to interest, my boy. Yes, I am also interested in making money. Hush, I am talking about the interest given by the bank. Are you two thinking about interest? Hello students, welcome to a brand new video of Notebook. In this video, we will be discussing about compound interest. Students, I hope you know that one who lends money is called lender and one who borrows money is called borrower. Interest is a compensation paid for the use of borrowed money. When a lender lends money to a borrower, the borrower repays the amount borrowed along with the interest. For example, interest is paid by financial institutions like bank and post office on money deposited by us to them. On depositing money in a bank, we are the lender and the bank is the borrower, so we get the interest. But if we borrow money from a bank, that is we take a bank loan, then we have to pay interest to the bank. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was just a short clip from one of the notebook videos. If you head on to our website, www.notebook.school, you would find more than 10,000 such videos at your disposal. Besides the work that we do with content, in our constant endeavor to engage the education community, we conduct annual events with our young students. Last year, we conducted the zero hour debate, which proved to be a huge hit. This year, we've taken it a step further. We partnered with IIM Calcutta Innovation Park in creating the Ignite event, an international inter-school online innovation and entrepreneurship challenge, which will see 64 schools right from Singapore all the way to Nigeria, battle it out, where students are gonna present innovative solutions to a host of world problems in front of a jury from IAM Calcutta. 
we have had a few initial master classes and we are about to begin with the event. The inauguration is at 6 p.m. on 23rd of July, which is this Friday. And it is my privilege and honor to cordially invite every one of you to please be a part of that event. We have some special guests, but it would mean the world to us and the students to have you there and inspire all of us. Well, ladies and gentlemen, with that said, it is now time to come back to the business at hand. We are discussing how best schools can utilize the holiday period. And who best to tell us than the wonderful, wonderful panel that we have with us today. We have with us Mr. Rajesh Kumar Srivastava, who's the Director of Academics at the Vedant International School in Sona, Gurgaon. Sir holds an MSc in Zoology, an MSc in Environmental Education, a B.Ed. and a DDE. He has over 25 years of experience as principal in various K-12 schools. He has visited Helsinki, Finland to study about education system in Finland. He trained prospective resource persons in science at his web. He trained transformative teacher training from Global Classroom Lucknow. Teacher training for supportive interventions for children with learning and behavioral problems from National Institute of Public Cooperation and Child Development, New Delhi, has been a freelance teacher trainer since 2002. He has numerous accreditations, numerous laurels to his credits, and he has trained over 5,000 participants and conducted more than 70 workshops. He has also been the author for over 250 books in EVS, science, biology, which covers CBSC board, Madras board, Rajasthan board, Jammu and Kashmir, Uganda, and Ghana. He has prepared the standard operating procedures for primary teachers, senior teachers, and management working manuals. Sir, it's a privilege to have you on the panel today. Thank you so much for making the time. We also have with us Dr. Sunita Singh, who's the principal of the Mount Litter Aziz School in Ahmedabad. She is a dedicated, resourceful educational professional with proven ability with 29 years of experience in the field of education. She holds an MSc, a BA, an MA, and a PhD. She keeps on updating herself with professional courses like courses in multiple intelligence as a tool to help students learn from Harvard University and a certification course in guidance and counseling, etc. She was associated with various convent schools in Punjab as an educator and also as the principal of leading higher secondary schools like St. Xavier's High School, Coast Guard Public School, and the SGVP International School. Currently, as I told you, she's working as the principal of Mount Luther Aziz School in Ahmedabad. For her contribution in the field of education and promotion of welfare, art, and culture and environment, she has been appreciated by various organizations and various platforms. She believes that religion, which every individual should follow, is that of humanity. Ma'am, for that wonderful thought and for being a part of this discussion today, I thank you. We also have with us Ms. Manisha Singh. She's an accomplished professional educator and vice principal with proven expertise in teaching, curriculum development, supervision, and program development. Her strengths include developing creative curricula, observing and evaluating teachers, planning lessons, and creating favorable learning environments for students and teachers. She has demonstrated the ability to establish meaningful partnerships with community education institutions. She's currently the vice principal at the Radiant International School in Patna, before which she was part of Litra Valley School in Patna, Sunbeam School Mughal Sarai, Brilliant Science Coaching Institute in Patna, Upshron ACL Limited in Bokaro, and was also a management trainee at Crompton Greaves in New Delhi. She's had various certifications and undertaken various career development programs. And she held the All India ninth position in the DISM course at APTEC. She herself holds a CTET in preliminary and elementary education, a B.Ed., an MBA in marketing, Masters of Science in environmental science, and a BSc with an honors in botany. Ma'am, thank you so much for being here. It's a privilege to have you on this platform. I shall stop my share, switch on the camera, so that we can all see each other. Once again, thank you so much for being a part of this panel. I would request our panelists to please keep their cameras on so that uh, you know we could have a free flowing discussion. Once again, thanks a lot for being here. Uh, it's our privilege to have you here. Uh, Mr. Srivastava, if I may come to you first. Good evening, Mr. Roy. It's nice to see you on the stage. Thank you, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. And other panelists also. Good evening to all the participants, attendees, and panelists. 
Thank you, Mr. Roy, for a very wonderful introduction. And I'm very happy and it's my privilege to be on this esteemed notebook platform. And I've been a participant many of the times attending your programs and all the programs have been very wonderful. And today it's one more opportunity for me to be on the platform and share your feelings. Thank you, sir, for calling me. Thank you so much, sir. The privilege is entirely ours to have experienced educators like you spare no, no, time I, and I should also have some privilege, Mr. Roy. <laughs> if all you, right, sir. If you we have, will share the privilege then. What, what will we have? Anyway, thank you. That's all on a lighter note. But yes. we share equal privilege. Thank, thank you, sir. You, sir. Um, Mr. Vasam, my first question is actually for you. Okay. Uh, growing up, right, holiday homework was a part of every holiday that we hated. Right, uh, you would go visit a nice place, and that would be it. But then coming back and writing a 200-word essay about it was not really fun. Yes. But I'm told today schools are leveraging holidays way beyond just homework. So, sir, I would like to know your thoughts about that. See, as uh, Mr. Bhattacharya and Mr. Philip had given enough light into this, and the question which you have put up me is very relevant question and contemporary also. What I think is that the schools they should have much better understanding about what is homework. It is a misconception is there. When the homework is given, it is, though it is a planned work, a bunch of papers are given, assignments are given. I've seen students of nursery and KG carrying homework sheets and that homework sheets are not actually for them, but it is for their parents. Another thing is that when planning the homework, they, the planning of homework should be done in such a manner that some skills should be developed. And these skills that should be contemporary skills which are required. For example, to just mention that learning skills should be developed with four C's in which communication is there, communication skills to be developed, critical skills to be developed, creative thinking skills to be developed, collaboration with other students of other schools that also needs to be developed and some innovative skills so that the students makes a new product for them. And when they come back to the school, they come with total enthusiasm that that is their product. In a similar manner, literary skills also should be taken care of. That is uh, information skills, media literacy and technology literacy. In this digital world, we are aware that a lot of information is available on Google, as well as in other social media is available, where the students can take out whatever they want and they can make use of it as per their need. And the third very important skill which is needed these days is that the life skills on which we, everyone of us are focusing. It can be every, the acronym can go as FLIPS, F-L-I-P-S which stands for flexibility and adaptability, leadership qualities, then initiative and productivity as Mr. Ashin was talking of, and then self-direction and a cross-cultural interaction. These all skills which I am mentioning, it is for the 21st century skills. And we are looking forward for the students of this generation for the future planning. And we are preparing for that. Also, one thing very important I would like to mention is that the, co the quotients which are important, not only the IQ, that is intelligent quotient, which most of the schools only focus for that, and the students are assessed in that. Now, there is a shift. The students should be allowed, students should know, the parents should know, the teachers should know, and the schools as well should know that emotional quotient is more important. IQ is for their school success and emotional quotient is for their success in their life. That is in real life situation, facing the challenges. Along with it, social quotient also should be there and adversity quotient also has to be given to the students during the holiday period. Because out of 365 days, in a year, we have 210 days as an academic session, roughly 100 
55 days or 60 days, depending upon the school, holidays are available. Some are long-term holidays as vacation, some are short holidays, one day holidays, two days holidays. And in this, a lot of scope is there where the PD of the student can be developed. The schools has to think over it and they have to plan accordingly. PD means the personality development of the student, then positive development of the student, performance development of the student, then product development of the student, some product they have to develop, and for the teachers, it can be professional development. During this holidays. And what the parents need to do is that, what guidance they can give to the students during this period is that they should focus on alternatives to homework. Even the school, CBSC has taken out a book known as Alternatives to Homework, which I know that most of the schools are not aware of it. If they are aware, it is kept in their library and teachers are not using it. This is just awareness is not there. And the homeworks, which has to be given in whatever grade, especially in primary classes, this alternatives to homework manual or book can be used by the teachers, which will create a joyful learning, fear-free learning and burden-free learning. This is the slogan of CCE, Continuous Comprehensive Evaluation. Unfortunately, this is not taken into account. Why? Because the teachers are overburdened with academic syllabus. They have to finish it and they have to give homework, which is a repetitive type, which Mr. Philip has already mentioned. The, what is the quantum of homework to be given that no one understands? And if a school does not give the homework to the children, then the parents come to the school and complain, your school is not good. The students do not pay attention in their home. They, are not, they create nuisance in the home. Therefore, we need homework. And the schools are pressurized, therefore, to give some homework to the parents and the children so that the students are engaged and parents are free to do their own work. So this is a misconception which is about the homework which has to be given. And the guidance during this by the parents that should be given to the children is that they should recognize the potential of the child. That is SWOT analysis to be done. The strength, weakness, opportunity and threat, that analysis has to be done. And once the potential is, is identified, then they should understand that recognition of individual, individual uniqueness is there. Every child is unique in his or her own way. They shouldn't compare. And once the uniqueness is identified, then the nurturance of the creativity of the child has to be done for the holistic development. Overall, this has to be done by the parents, supported by the parents. And as I mentioned, SWOT analysis will help in improving the students in their personality. Then also the multiple intelligence is there, which comes into the play. Some students are good in music, others are good in mathematics. And there are students who are good in three to four intelligences. Once the parents understand the, the aptitude of the children, then accordingly they can be nurtured. This is what can be done during the holidays. And once they guide their children, then it will develop their personality. And one of the very important thing which is required is that the, the storybooks which has gone out of the shelf for the students. Punch Tantra stories for developing the life skills that is missing. And storytelling at home is totally gone. We don't, grandparents usually used to tell the stories. Parents used to tell the stories. I think that you also might have heard a lot of stories from your parents. And these stories are the lifelong books which teach you a lot of things from this. And this is what can be done during the holidays. So holidays contribute to develop the life skills with activities and storybooks, personality development, SWOT analysis. Once it is done, then the students, parents, 
can work on their weaknesses and they look for for the opportunities and the threats whatever they have in their academic field that can be overcome in this in this duration of holidays so this type of planning has to be done by the schools this type of understanding has to be done by the teachers and the parents and the school management where we start focusing on certain skills this is the era of skill development so all the students they have got certain skill to hone and that has to be nurtured it is not very important that all the students should get academically they should be 100 out of 100 it is important that the students should be academically sound so that do not fail in their examination but one skill should be there when i was a student i had two hobbies one was drawing and painting till my college days i used to do and one is filetty if you heard if you know it that is the collection of stamps i don't think that the students do right now and when i was a student in my again in the primary classes we used to collect the pictures of match boxes the labels it was called as the cigarette boxes used to be called because this had a data collection in its own way we used to collect the data we used to collaborate with different groups of students how many collections you have done and we used to study that and then you to be winner whoever collects a lot of that then it becomes the winner we used to play a different type of physical games where social emotional learning was happening now social emotional learning is not happening everyone is sitting on the television screen playing their video games and they have been confined into small cells which is making them handicapped so this of our use regarding the holiday homeworks which should focus on the skill development performance development positive development product development of the student and make them emotionally quotient their eq should be more high because 80% of eq helps them in the success and 20% helps them in passing their examination that is the iq and also social quotient spiritual quotient and adversity quotient should be inculcated among the children so that they become a better individuals a better human being and this is what is the holistic development over to you mr roy wonderful sir that was such a well rounded list of things that you know holidays can be used for uh, sir you used to draw and paint my hobby during school days was drawing cartoons oh and that's where notebook oh, comes from yours. yes <laughs> very good excellent so, th- those are not drawn by me that's done by the team but the, the, oh. the whole cartoon uh, thing came from a hobby actually Yeah, Relatively, unfortunately, with most of our communication becoming electronic, I yeah. can't remember the last time I have stuck a stamp on something. Right, sir. Thank you, sir. Doctor Singh, if I may come to you next, ma'am. Uh, sir has given quite a comprehensive list, uh, but if you could add on to that, ma'am. Uh, Doctor Singh, you have to unmute yourself. A very good evening to all of you, and. Uh, before me all the speakers had wonderfully given an overview mr bhattacharya has given uh, the historical background of how summer vacation started and mr shrivastav has indeed uh, spoken in a very good way all technical technicality of uh, you know the education and the homework so let me come to my point according to me holidays is the time for rest it is time for relaxation time for family and celebrations i think all of you will agree with me to keep the child in touch with the subjects uh, during long school holidays short break it's okay they come and they go when it comes to summer vacation and the winter vacation we need to plan something to keep them into routine we know that and we all have been uh there an experience what happens is when child children go for a long break after significant amount of time uh, when they are not in routine the child struggles to get back on the track and routine of the school kids are happy during their long vacation 
because they are not going to the school they don't have to get up early in the morning and they are not instructed to do certain things on time that's fine but when it's time to come back to the school the reality hits them hard and so do the books and the teachers and the school system i still remember my time during our days we used to visit our grandparents during summer vacation that was very common in my time so uh, how those two months of summer vacation used to fly uh, we never realized just three or four days before reopening of the school we used to just look at what our teachers and that time i remember i am a student of uh, 70s i did my schooling in 70s era so uh, most of the teachers that time used to give one page copywriting in english one page copywriting hindi five to 10 sums of mathematics to be practiced every day but we never opened our books during those those two months and it was last three or four days just for the sake of completing the work we used to scribble something and fill up the pages day to wise that that was the system that time so th what i mean to say by citing this example is the work was completed no doubt just for the sake of completion uh the purpose of giving the homework by the teacher was not at all solved we used to do and i remember at times i made my parents to write some of the pages for me because i couldn't complete the work on time then uh, the question is uh, uh, how the holidays can be utilized for learning i believe that children can learn new things by their own if they learn by their own they'll never forget it throughout their life and it would improve their skills and abilities what uh, the previous speakers had been talking about a child love to learn new things and it when it get combined with art and uh, they show more interest in knowing more about it and doing more about it because they have the feeling of accomplishment when they do something and see the result in front of them this learning during holidays can be made easier by giving them activities which combine with beautiful colors hands on activities thus leading to perfect learning it makes them happier and smarter the children uh, they can prove themselves among other students even if they are not good at subjects they they are at least good at artwork they uh, they can present their creativity proudly in front uh, of uh, the classmates Uh, interest and talent come out of uh, uh, someone when they involve themselves in activity the conclusion is that holidays homework play an important role in the student's life i have noticed like uh, children uh, who learn by doing they demonstrate uh, stronger critical thinking skills they are more creative they are they have better imagination power they display higher level of social tolerance they exhibit empathy and they are more compassionate they develop a taste for arts the knowledge of different culture hence what i feel is before assigning the homework to the students teachers must do their homework thoroughly uh, like uh, they must tie the writing task with spe specific pedagogical goals the task assigned must be age appropriate as uh, mr shrivastava was mentioning many a times the it is the parent who are forced to do the work because that is not age appropriate all elements of the task must be very clear the learning outcome should be very clear so the child should be clear before doing the task what is the learning outcome or the objective breakdown of the task into manageable steps should be there and of course parents role is very crucial in making the child utilize the holidays in a effective way all learning activities or reading should not occur at the time uh, should occur at the time when children are fresh they should be careful to avoid the words like uh, you need to do your homework you need to do learning it should be done because uh, your teacher has asked you to do or sometimes some of the parents use the word like if you don't 
complete your assignment, your teacher will scold you or she will punish you. Instead, learning should be under the guise of fun. Let's do it. Uh, suggest your child uh, to pick up a book and read aloud while uh, the parents are doing their work. Mother, maybe she's preparing the breakfast. Uh, let them know each day that there'll be some fun activity with involving with the parents so that the child is looking forward for the next day. What next fun we will have with the family? I remember uh, yeah, uh, to increase the speed of my son doing the mathematics problem because he used to, uh, he was very, uh, you know, uh, late in doing the calculation, slow in doing the calculation. So what I, uh, you pl plan was, let's have a race. Who will do the sums faster? So uh, I, I don't know how, how that mathematics, which was something, uh, a very uninteresting subject from a child became a fun activity. It was a fun time for him. Hence, uh, this is what this example I've cited just to explain that parents' involvement makes a lot of difference in the child, life of the child. Let the children explore their surrounding, make word games for them. While traveling, ask the children to read the sign on the road, uh, distance or, uh, mention on the milestones, the, with the unit kilometers per hour, Explain to that term, uh, to, uh, explain to them that term, uh, let them uh, find out the speed if they are traveling in the car or uh, any um, mode of uh, transportation, what's the speed with which your vehicle is moving, let them, uh, you know, uh, find out how much distance is covered in this particular specific time. Uh, so they, they can be encouraged to play memory game, uh, uh, memory chain games, uh, when I was a kid, you no, know, we used to travel by train. So me and my brother, you know, we used to write down the name of all the railway stations and the rivers or the bridges we, uh, which we came across during our journey. That was a very good learning experience for us while crossing the state, which cities are in one particular state. We, that was our learning, which rivers flow across which a state. That was a learning experience for us. So you know, similarly, maths can be included in our day-to-day -day life, like uh, with small kids, primary and the middle school children, the concept of cost price, selling price, profit, loss can be included by uh, 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 just buying and uh, the things, uh, giving the, uh, the money to the child to pay to uh, the shopkeeper. With what, which denomination um, of the rupees or the coin should be given to the shopkeeper? How much balance should be taken back from the shopkeeper? These are small things, but they count a lot. Max can be, uh, you know, in everyday activity, playing, uh, using playing cards for three to eight years of age of children. It could be uh, to teach them greater than, lesser than uh, number concept. Uh, ascending, descending order while climbing up the stairs and coming down uh, the stairs, that can be included. Challenge the older students to find geometrical shape in everyday items. Then a uh, step further, uh, making them calculate the perimeters, area, that concept can be included. 15 to 20 minutes time a day can be kept aside for uh, writing. Uh, make the children keep their journals. Uh, ask the child to write uh, about the happening of the day. Even better, have them uh, to write about uh, the vacation. How did they spend the day, uh, their plans, their goals. Uh, involve them in weaving a story. Give them an opening sentence. Ask them to add a sentence to it. Then the parent can add or if uh, the siblings are there, they can be involved. So children will definitely improve their uh, language. At the same time, it will be a fun. Picture composition can be given. They can be shown a picture and asked to write a composition on it. Movie review can be done. They can be asked to describe the character they like the most after watching a movie or listening to a story from anyone or reading a story, in fact. Uh, then uh, focus on specific learning ideas. Identify the child's challenge area in learning and create exercise to strengthen their skill sets. 
if they struggle with maths fact you yeah, make them uh, game out of the flash card uh, if they struggle in reading uh, flu uh, reading or fluency or comprehension have them read aloud in the car or while uh, doing any work at home ask them the questions such as who what when where why and they will be encouraged to speak if they make statement about something they have seen on the tel television or they read in the newspaper ask them their opinion and encourage them to do research on the topic and uh, i feel holidays are the best time to bring the kids close to the nature that's uh, one of a very uh, area very close to my heart students can make use of their summer vacation in uh, working towards environment uh, mr philip had already mentioned that by engaging in cleanliness drive conservation of resources it could be water it could be electricity for this activity student need not go out anywhere and begin in their own surroundings activity like planting trees stopping wastage of water in their locality and cleaning around especially along with their friends and practical learning and it's all practical learning and fun to do today a very important thing is to make kids responsible towards their environment and help them to bond with nature free from the distraction of technology a nature camp for a week can be a big boost for fostering the love for mother nature and make them realize the importance of sustainable living nature camp again uh, mr philips has already spoken on it that's a very good idea Uh, time to uh, children can relax they can share they they can explore and learn lot many new fascinating things about the nature uh, indulge into nature photography bird watching enjoy being uh, eco friendly make them visit and inter interact with less privileged children this is something very important we need to promote among our children uh, less privileged children especially uh, especially able children uh like blind home they can be taken to take them to old age home animal shelter and this i believe uh, will develop them into a very compassionate human being who will be more responsible towards the need of other people in the society then visiting new places that that we all do as per the socio economic stat status some people go abroad some uh, visit different states uh, the hill stations it could be anywhere as per uh, the parents planning that's a very uh, fun idea for the children they can visit with their family and uh, in this way they will be able to learn new facts about the places uh, they can know about the history of the place uh, they can uh, know about the livelihood of uh, the people in that area about the culture uh this when they come back uh, to school they will be refreshed and excited to share uh, the different stories and experiences with other children of the class so what they can do is uh after coming back or uh, during vacation itself they can prepare a dossier of uh, their visit stick the photographs of uh, which they had clicked of uh, the place they can come to, uh, research on the geographical lo location history of the place or the state they had visited or the country they have visited then they what are the main crops the food delicacies of that place the famous personality of that place uh, they can do research on them and prepare a dossier a very good project uh, they can submit uh, for the school and i'm sure they will really enjoy working on these type of work and this is covering all aspect of their education the language part the research part then uh, presentation skill their geography part everything is uh, you know covered under it and uh, this is definitely going to increase their confidence their self esteem uh, and uh, of course that uh, pride in uh, uh, the our country with ver varied culture they'll come to know about that and i'm sure uh, during holidays if uh, the things which are mentioned by the previous speakers and uh, what whatever i have mentioned uh, definitely the parents will find improvement in the child's learning students have opportunity to 
build, uh, as I've mentioned, self-esteem, their confidence, their knowledge, and uh, uh, they will, uh, you know, day-to-day uh, -day way of uh, study, uh, they'll come out of it. A study should never be a burden on the children. Uh, life is beyond ac academics. We need uh, to train the children for the examination of life, not only the academic examination, the, which, which is ultimately going to count for their success. And um, this is what uh, from my end. Thank you very much for listening. Over Wonderful, ma'am. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think uh, between Mr. Shivastav and Dr. Singh, you know, have a very comprehensive list, right? Uh, things you can do to enhance the educational quality of your child's education. Uh, Manisha, ma'am, I will come to you with something that's a little more recent. Now, this was the case when students were going to school. Vacation was the time when teachers were absent, parents were present. Now, this just with their parents. Teachers were coming in as part of the online classes and during vacations, that is also absent, which means the parents have to deal with the student the entire day. How, how does that impact education, Mama? Uh, uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, it was really a pleasure to listen to Mr. Philip, Mr. Shivasta, Dr. Singh. And uh, thank you, Notebook, for taking up a very important uh, topic because uh, generally people just uh, take it for granted the holiday part so but uh, as uh, mr roy you asked uh, the parental involvement uh, without the parental involvement the holidays or uh, anything is not possible uh, we uh, it is understandable that due to the pandemic the teachers uh, role has is just limited to the online classes but uh, even during this period, if the school and the teacher is uh, conscious enough to devise the uh, assignments, I would not call it as a homework because uh, now, whether it is the classwork, if you term it that, they are doing it sitting at their home, whether it is the homework, they are again, due to the pandemic, they are doing it at home. So let us call it as assignment. But uh, during the holidays, when we uh, are devising the assignments, it has to be in a way which uh, encourages the child to shift away from the book. That is the bookish learning, the rote learning has to go away. And the child needs to learn as the other speakers have also mentioned from the surroundings, from uh, uh, and uh, the learning has to also be a very, very important thing is that the learning has to be joyful. Uh, parents' involvement encourages the children to be to have more positive attitude towards learning. And uh, whether it is a bedtime story, whether it is a simple question after a class, uh, after an online class, as to how was your class? Did you enjoy your online class today? Uh, we cannot deny the involvement. So uh, when we are involving the parents in uh, ensuring that the holidays contribute in the learning and we are requesting them to spend more time uh, with them, uh, we need to be very, very mindful of uh, how the holidays have, to have been uh, uh, devised, the assignments rather has been devised. Because if uh, planned properly, uh, the assignments can be very uh, done in a very constructive way. It can bring out the creativity of the child. It can help in the critical thinking. And um, all these lead to the 21st century skill learning. Uh, the... Uh, uh, any uh, assignment which is given, which is activity based, if it involves the parent along with the uh, students, it will definitely help in developing the stronger family bond. Uh, as one of the speakers had already mentioned that it is always the television and always the other media through which the students are trying to get the entertainment and it might also 
lead to wrong learning from these media so if the parents involvement is there and the activities are being done together uh, it will definitely also uh, uh, help the parents to keep a tab on what the child is actually viewing or what the child is actually doing moreover any uh, activity done together helps not only in bonding with the family but uh, if you uh, sit back and think uh, when the children were going to school and uh, the life was going on in the old normal way uh, how many times did actually people sit and talk to each other as to how was your day maybe the everybody busy the parents busy with their own office and home chores the student busy with their uh, assignments and all so maybe the dinner table was only the time when they were sitting together and that too would be going uh, the talk would be a casual talk so now uh, when it is the online mode and when the students ha uh, are now interacting with the parent i think it gives a better chance to talk and listen for the parent and uh, get to know what where the child's interest is and accordingly this will also help in uh, um, charting out the road map for the future for their career later on in life uh, in at this stage i would also like to add that uh, what uh, whenever we are talking about the holiday assignment uh, of course the parents need not be directly involved in it they could just help out with the art and craft and the other activities but basically it should be student led and the teachers need to devise whatever assignment is being given it should be research based uh, leading the child towards digital literacy uh, see in this uh, era blended learn uh, learning is here to stay now the online classes will never go away or rather online learning will never go away okay uh, not uh, minimizing the importance of uh, school life not minimizing the importance of that playground and the music class and the dance class but uh, the online learning platform definitely has its own use okay so um, instead of a child writing down 30 pages of uh, uh, hand, um, writing and writing or uh, writing uh, table of uh, 2 to 20 10 times such kind of uh, instead of that let us uh, let the teachers sit together do proper research first on their own devise the interdisciplinary homework that is don't go ki ho english you have got this homework maths you have got to do these many sums let it be a interdisciplinary the cross cross linkage of the subject needs to be there and uh, because the online mode is now available it can often be group activity with the other students it can be with the uh, uh, family with the at the home for example uh, when we talk about uh, let us say uh, if a, a maths teacher wants to give uh, a homework on weights and measurements and the other things a uh, uh, kitchen can be the best place for a child to learn or maybe in a chem or a science class so the teacher and uh, so uh, so if the teacher has devised the assignment properly i think it will not be a burden either for the parent and it will be joyful learning for the child which will lead to a better personality development at this stage i would also uh, want to add one very important thing that through these assignments awareness about the surroundings awareness about the environment and uh, learning about the sustainable development goals the sdgs uh, can be uh, made uh, possible the students let them choose whatever sdg uh, sdg they uh, feel connected to let them do more research work let them devise activities how they can contribute towards achieving these sdgs so in this way they can uh, the students can uh, do their work uh, at home without any uh, hand holding because it is totally research based which is going to later on help them when they move on to their college also 
So um, this is what I have to contribute towards this. Wonderful one. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I think today I was not necessary. Between the three of you, in succession, you have covered the entire gamut of things possible during a holiday. Uh, we just have about 10 minutes left. So I will cut to the last question that I have, which is, uh, while holidays are a wonderful time, they are not equally wonderful for everyone. Uh, Dr. Singh earlier mentioned this. It's now a function of socioeconomic strata as to where you spend your holiday. Uh, could be just in another room in the house, could be in Paris. And it is a reality that we live with, that our schools are aspirations for some and compromises for some others, uh, depending on which part of the society they're coming from. Uh, Masina, if I may stay with you for this question as well, and before going to the others, uh, what is your take, ma'am? How do you try and balance out that socioeconomic imbalance when people are coming back from the holidays with very different experiences? Uh, one very important thing which uh, I would like to, uh, uh, which I mentioned to my teachers is no question should be given on where did you spend your holiday and how did you spend your holiday? Because uh, once you ask this, so one child is going to write about, uh, as you said, a vacation in an exotic place and the other child is uh, going to uh, is going to keep mum maybe because he or she could not uh, or they pay uh, his uh, or her parent could not afford to take them to uh, exotic location even for uh, let, what say of exotic location they could not even go out of the town so uh, this sensitivity has to be there with the uh, educator whosoever is dealing with these children uh, why not discuss uh, about a book which you have read? Why not discuss about a film which has inspired you? Why not discuss about the activities you do? One very, uh, at this juncture, I would also like to um, uh, mention here that not only the socioeconomic uh, disparity, uh, now we have to be very, very sensitive because as per the survey in India, around 1.5 lakh students have lost either of their parents due to the pandemic. And in this situation, we have to be very, very uh, mindful of the questions which are posed to the students. And uh, we have to be very, very mindful when we are uh, devising the activities so that it does not involve lots of cost. It does not involve uh, uh, like, uh, if in a class, we know that a child uh, has recently lost one of the parent and the question uh, assignment given by the teacher is that uh, go and uh, interview your mother and uh, whatever, whatever. So it is very, very unmindful. So uh, uh, not only for the socioeconomic strata, but also for the uh, parents availability, uh, the educator has to be mindful and has to uh, devise the activities in a way uh, so that such gaps are not uh, obvious when uh, the discussion comes in the classroom. Okay. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, in fact, this is one of the reasons why we at Notebook say that we are a teaching aid and no technology can ever substitute a teacher because this kind of personal knowledge that you have about the student is something that no technology can purport to have. And Dr. Singh, if I may come to you next time. Uh, how do you try to kind of even out the imbalances when they're coming back from very different experiences during the holidays? Uh, what I feel is it, it is on uh, the experience of a teacher. Teacher is that, it, she's a professional. She should know how to encourage a child to speak. It, uh, no matter the child went to Paris or the child went to the nearby uh, village. But teacher has to accept the explanation of the child, maybe uh, with a non-verbal communication also, she makes the expression, wow, you saw this, that will make the day of the child. So it hardly matters for a child, uh, this, uh, so we create among them, it is not the children. They don't know uh, the difference. It is the adults who create these things in the mind of the child. So it is on the personality of a teacher, how she appreciate the child's small uh, contribution or learning through 
uh, wherever he went. Maybe he did not went anywhere. The child did not go anywhere. They stayed at home. But at home, they might have lot many experience that could be highlighted in the class. So that uh, is uh, the uh, tact of the teacher, how she handles the situation. This is what I feel. Thank you so much, ma'am. Mr. Shivastav, sir, uh, you are the opening batsman. You get to bowl the last over as well. What is your take on this, sir? You have to unmute yourself, please. So you're on mute. If you could unmute yourself, please. So I have to answer the same question. Yes, sir. Pretty much. Okay. As Manisha, Madam, and uh, Dr. Sunita had rightly said, the, te the experienced teacher needs to understand this and has to be mindful. I would like to add to this uh, what both the ladies had said that. See, there are some children who are coming from a very low economic uh, status, and we have to keep that one also in the mind that when uh, this uh, we are asking a general question in the class regarding where did you go, how did you spend your holidays? Two things came to my mind right now is that maybe during the holidays, the parent, either the mother or father or anyone in the family might have gone sick. And during that sick period, the student or the child could not move out. So that trauma which is there in the mind of the child that should be empathized. And second is that there are some children who are coming from traders' family, like small shopkeepers. And when the vacations come, holidays come, they are the helping hands for their parents. And they are being, in other way, they are being trained for the future also. They how to handle a shop, how to deal with the customers, how to how to manage the things on their own. Sometimes it happens that the father or the mother who is running the shop says that, okay, now you handle the shop for half an hour. I'm going for a lunch or I'll be back after one or two hours. So this type of training, which is being given to such type of students who are coming from this category that also has to be encouraged. And rather, or if the teacher comes to know that the student is a helping hand in the shopkeeping, then we, the other students should be encouraged. Yes, let's go to his shop and see how he does his work efficiently. This will give a model boosting. Second thing, rightly, as Manisha Madam had said, that during the pandemic, a worse situation was there, which everyone has suffered. And in the newspapers, I read that one or two children, one child was selling fish in the market because one parent she had lost. And the other child was sitting on the street and doing some work, rather some she was studying or doing some homework and something was to be sold by her. So this type of scenario also is there in our country. And this is what is the beauty of our country that right from the streets to the elite schools, we have got the children who have got different strata and they are going to Paris or get into Rome or going outside the country and they're enjoying. So we should try to make a balance between this and we should not try to underestimate the children or the family. We should not make them feel in low esteem if they have not gone for any vacation or they have not visited any place or whatever the reason is, we should take it as a normal course of time. I mean, some can go outside, some cannot go out. There are many factors which help the children or the family that they should go outside. There are many factors which keep the family that they cannot go outside because of the reason either the either grandparents are not well or the parents themselves are not well or the economic status is not permitting them to do so. Therefore, in such situations, as Madam had said, we should be mindful in asking, how did you spend your holidays? And always spending the holidays does not mean that you have to go and visit some place. Spending the holiday also means that how did you do your work at home? How did you look after your gay and parents? How did you look after your pets? How did you look after your garden in your house? If you don't have this all things, then how did you look after your belongings which you had in your home and help your parents in this? So this is what comes to my mind. 
and we should be very careful in asking such type of things because certain things hurt the feelings of the children because of certain reasons maybe that they were not able to do it and also usually in our times holidays were meant for marriages if you remember it whenever a marriage was to be fixed in the family first we used to we used to ask other members that when is the holidays coming up it is in the summer or this then we are going to fix up a marriage for that particular day and that was to be not a single day marriage a wedding event it was to be for a week where all the relatives friends used to come enjoy and a lot of fun used to be there so that is really going out of our society because of lack of time and this digital era where each one is busy and no one has got time for such type of events this all are becoming very very digitalized so while working for the students holidays the importance of holidays has to be made realized to them even if they are not gone anywhere outside the house if they spend the time with their parents that is very important with their grandparents and dr sunita had said that when we were traveling we used to uh, we used to make the list of the railway stations this is what we used to do it has come to our mind and plenty of things are there from by which we can enjoy the holidays so to conclude to put it in one or two sentences is that we should be very mindful while planning our holidays and when the students come back after the holidays in the class we should intentionally be very mindful not to ask such questions that may prick any student or put the student in a low esteem or the student should feel disappointed because this can lead to depression of the child as well psychological effect should not be there i hope i have given some information to you and we should be very careful about the child psychology as well parent psychology as well and then behave like a good responsible professional educators thank you mr roy for that thank you thank you so much uh, i think this has been a fantastic discussion we started with effic efficiency and effectiveness of holidays we have come the full circle to humanity and inclusivity and being mindful about students and also about so changing social structures well i must thank all of you for the time that you spent i will call ashin up in a moment for the official vote of thanks i can honestly say that particularly bharat sir is extremely happy today because he has been a geography teacher all his life and we have two people here who said they write down names of train stops and bridges which is absolutely a dream for every geography teacher come true i also take this opportunity to welcome you once more to the inauguration event of notebook ignite uh, which is happening at 6 pm indian time at uh, at 6 pm india time on friday the 23rd of july which is this friday if you can spare the time and join us in inspiring the students that would be absolutely fantastic well ochin it is now over to you for the vote of thanks i think a uh, really wonderful session we had uh, no doubt about it but sir uh, thank you as always for giving us a great start i think uh, really some wonderful uh, thoughts in your side and today as i listening to all my esteemed speakers really i i felt the whole uh, you know discussion today is seamless uh, with so much of wealth of experience you know tickets of experience and some great thoughts and dr singh thank you so much for sharing your perspective for being a part uh, of this uh, ma'am pleasure and daily hours i think uh, when you were discussing about railway travel about riding on new stations rivers landscape it really took us back to a different era so thank you thank you for sharing your thoughts and i completely agree with you that yes subjects like maths uh, their application in day to day day to day life uh, aspects like money management which is so important you know uh, for for for, for later so stages important. of life yes yeah, so important so naturally i think uh, holidays vacations are a great time uh, to to ensure that uh, children get a hang of it and aspects like uh, whether that be weaving a story you know because creativity at the end of the day is so so important uh, you know in, in, irrespective of any profession any vocation the children choose for themselves in later stages of their life so and as and as uh, we are seeing with the seamless flow of information all around the world i think the entire pattern the entire structure is changing in future you know two three decades from now no one will be employed gainfully for sharing information because information is becoming you know so easily available today if you go to a professional 
even before visiting a lawyer or a doctor, there are chances that we have done a basic Google search and we are ever about the basics. We are not going to know the basics from him or her. Mm -hmm. So our expectation has definitely gone in a few notches up. So that element of creativity, that element of really being able to apply knowledge, and that is where I think uh, creativity is, is so important. So be it in terms of movie review, reading a story, learning ideas, some wonderful uh, aspects you discussed, ma'am. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate that. Uh, Manisha, ma'am, uh, thank you so much uh, for your time here today. I think some, uh, some, some very interesting aspects you brought uh, to the discussion, especially including you know, parents' involvement, uh, the importance of positive attitude, uh, doing activities together, the entire bonding thing, which I'm sure during the last one and a half years, uh, definitely with parents working so closely and at times stepping into the shoes of educator, ensuring that, okay, so I'm sure that this will have a two-pronged effect. You know, one, on one aspect, I'm sure parents appreciate the role that teachers play in day-to-day -day life. So when they're, when they're happily working in their office, when they're, when they're busy elsewhere, they understand what teachers go through throughout the day, taking care of children. So I speak to many of my friends today and I see genuinely they appreciate the role of teachers even more, especially after what has happened during the last one and a half years. Uh, so I think uh, that, that bonding aspect and also I think uh, uh, the entire concept of SDG, Sustainable Development Goals, I think that is really very important. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your perspective. Uh, Rajesh, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, thank you so much uh, for your time, for, for being a part of this gathering and for sharing your thoughts. So if I if I look at what you what you were sharing, especially the last part of the discussion, four words come to my mind, sir. If you allow me, uh, mature, evolved, enriching, and very holistic. You know that's how I'll, I'll I'll put it. I really like that part on inclusivity when we were discussing about, and I think these are things which uh, which which are, which are so important to ensure that we are sensitive. We are sensitive to one and all. And given the fact that we live in in the in the world's largest democracy, and we have seen people, uh, we have seen students who had a very difficult upbringing in challenging circumstances, occupying the highest offices in the country. And that's what the democracy brings you know, to, to the board. So undoubtedly, it's really important that we are mindful of other people's feeling. And that entire concept of inclusivity is so, so important to ensure that when we're discussing something, we don't hurt someone else's feelings. I think that is really important. And those fine thoughts, so be it with regard to a trader student who run errands or who help their parents you know, in, in those shops, so I think uh, these are these are aspects which which I completely agree with you that it is important that yes we are we are aware about them we are sensitive about them and the fact is that I think the best part is when you when you don't, when you are sharing your thought that we should encourage other children to go and visit that shop I think that has to be the attitude it's not about it's not about concealing it's not about hiding it's not about someone else not being able to come to the forefront and say that yes I didn't get the chance to go anywhere but rather being proud of you know, you, you, what you're doing, because at the end of the day, there's an element of honesty in it. So I really appreciate, uh, you know, your thoughts uh, in this regard. So we had a great discussion. I also thank uh, our members of our esteemed audience for their time, the evening. And I'm sure there are some great takeaways from the discussion. Thank you. Thank you. And take care. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, Achan. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.